Welcome to the Community Church Podcast. My name's Alan Cleveland. I'm the lead pastor at Community Church, and it's so great to have you uh, join with us as we explore God's Word today. Good morning and welcome to Community Church Online. I'm so glad that you have joined us here this morning. Uh, my name is Joe Aronson. Uh, I'm one of the pastors here. and uh, Welcome to my house. Uh, it is good to have you here uh, in, in my house today. We've been at your house for the past number of weeks uh, with the, the live stream and things of that nature. And, uh, and thank you for allowing us into your house. And so we thought we would, uh, we'd return the favor, I guess. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing the pictures of, uh, of you and of your pets, those furry, scaly, or otherwise pets, just make sure you use that hashtag ICUCC. Uh, we have uh, three kids, they're not pets, but we also have one dog, one small dog, and we have 10 chickens, uh, one of which is a rooster. And you might hear either the kids, the dog, or the chickens, the rooster, uh, making some noises in the background, but we're just gonna roll with it because these are strange times. So why wouldn't we have a rooster? in church on Sunday morning. <clears throat> Things keep, and keep getting a, even a, a bit more abnormal as this uh, Safer at Home order was rolled out this past week and as we figure out how to deal with this coronavirus pandemic and there's, uh, there's lots of different facets to this and on a serious note, I just wanted us to call this what it is. This is a bad situation. This is not a good situation. And that's okay for us to say. We can't acknowledge that. This situation means different things for each of us. Some of us are, are now working from home like, like I am and the other, the other staff here at church are. Some of us in our community have been laid off and we don't know what's next. Some of us are on the other side of the spectrum and we're working 60, 70, 80 hour weeks in the, the medical field or the financial field or whatever it is that, that you do. We're all just trying to be flexible and adapt to wherever it is that we are in this crazy season. We will get through this. We will get through this together. We can't do much about the situation that we find ourselves in. But the call that God gives to us is to be faithful in that situation. We've got to seize the season, as Pastor Carl said last week. Whether you're at home with a ton of time on your hands or you're working lots of overtime, the call to all of us is to be faithful and to make the most of the time that we have. And that's exactly what Jesus is talking about in the passage that we're going to look at this morning in uh, Luke chapter 19, verses 11 through 27. So if you have uh, your Bible, whether it's digital or, or a book, um, please turn there to, to Luke chapter 19, verse 11 through 27. Uh, we're in this series called Luke, a documentary. Um, and uh, we've been going through this since, the, since around the Christmas season, uh, looking at the, the life of Jesus. And the question that we've been continually asking is, what does Luke want us to understand about Jesus and what he stands for? What does Luke want us to understand about who Jesus is and, and what he's teaching and how he wants us to see the world? And so up to this point, Jesus has been traveling around, performing miracles, teaching on, on all sorts of things, and hanging out with people that the religious leaders said that he shouldn't be hanging out with. This parable that Jesus te is teaching that we're going to look at this morning uh, comes right after Jesus has spent some time with this wee little man named Zacchaeus. So let's dive into to Luke chapter 19. Uh, you can follow along in your Bible, otherwise I'll, I'll have it on the, on the screen here as well. As they heard these things, he, Jesus, proceeded to tell a parable. Because he was near to Jerusalem, and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately, he said, therefore, a nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and then return. Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten minus, and said to them, Engage in business until I come. 
But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned, having received the kingdom, he ordered these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him that he might know what they had gained by doing business. The first came before him saying, Lord, your mina has made 10 minas more. And he said to him, the nobleman said to the servant, well done, good servant. Because you have been faithful in a very little, you shall have authority over 10 cities. And the second came saying, Lord, your mina has made five minas. And he said to him, and you are to be over five cities. Then another came saying, Lord, here is your mina, which I kept laid away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you because you are a severe man. You take what you did not deposit and you reap what you did not sow. He said to him, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank that at my coming I might have collected it with interest? And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to the one who has the ten minas. And they said to him, Lord, he, he has 10 minus. And Jesus replied, I tell you that to everyone who has more will be given, but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken. But as for these enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. This is Luke chapter 19, verses 11 through 27. This is kind of an intense parable. And the first thing that I want us to understand as we look at this parable is that you can't control the hand that you've been dealt. So Jesus tells this parable and the nobleman is going far away into a different country and he calls 10 of his servants together. And he gives them each 10 minus 10. Uh, it's a monetary value, a, a fairly substantial amount of money. And he, he gives them the marching orders to engage in business until he returns. It's interesting in, in Matthew's account of this story that there's, uh, there's one servant who gets five talents, another monetary value. One servant that gets two talents and one servant that gets one talent. And you might say, well, that's created a bit of a problem. There's two different stories. Well, no, not really. Because Jesus probably told the same version of this story multiple times to fit the occasion. It was part of the things that he was teaching. And so he would contextualize it depending on the situation that he was in. They both have the same meaning to them. And what's important for us to understand is that the, the servants, they can't control the hand that they're dealt they each get 10 minus. Now, we don't know the circumstances by which they find themselves as a servant or like an employee of this nobleman. But no matter how you slice it, the servants find themselves in this place with 10 minus. That's the hand that they have been dealt. In a lot of ways, you can't control the hand that you've been dealt either. Now, certainly we can all think of examples where, no, we, the, the decisions that we make certainly do affect our lives. Like if we live outside of our means, then we'll end up in a bad spot financially. Certainly we have some impact on this, but, but you didn't cause this pandemic to occur that, that upset the global apple cart. We are in this situation where there is a global pandemic we didn't cause it, but we are living in that reality now. That reality looks different to all of us as we've talked about. And you can't control the hand that you've been dealt in this season, but wherever you are, whatever hand it is that you have been dealt, the call is to be faithful. The call is to be faithful. 
So the nobleman in this parable that Jesus tells, he, he leaves and the servants are supposed to engage in business. And so up to this point, we've had, uh, we've had two main characters, the noblemen and then the servants. And now enters this third group, the citizens. The citizens, they send a message to the noblemen and they say, we don't want you to rule over us anymore. This group of people in this parable is, it symbolizes the nation of Israel. Jesus, who is the nobleman in this story, has been rejected by them. And he's about to come into what we call Holy Week, where he is, he's going to come into Jerusalem and the triumphal entry. And, and as he goes through this week, he will continue to be rejected, ultimately by being crucified. These citizens are saying, we don't want you, God, to rule over us anymore. Jesus is contextualizing this story for the situation in which he finds himself. So the nobleman is gone, the servants are supposed to continue to engage in business, and the citizens aren't real happy. Well, eventually the nobleman comes back. He returns, and we don't know how long exactly it, it, he was away, but... He, when he comes back, he calls the servants to himself and he, he says, okay, tell me what it is that you've been able to do. And so the first of the servants comes and says, Lord, your 10 mina has made 10 more. You have doubled what you have had. And the nobleman responds, well done, good and faithful servant. Because you have been faithful in a very little, you shall have authority over 10 cities. You've been faithful with these 10 minas, you'll have authority over 10 cities. The second comes and says, Lord, your mina has made five minas. And his response is in that same celebratory fashion, says, and, and you are to be over five cities. Implying that he has done well with the time that he has had and the business that he has conducted. Even though it's not the same, he has still done well with it. And then the third servant, the third servant comes and says, Lord, here is your mina, which I kept laid away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you because you are a severe man. You take what you did not deposit and you reap what you did not sow. Now, what exactly is this servant accusing the nobleman of? And he, as he calls him a severe man, another translation calls him a tough man. He has expectations. There are things that he wants to see done. And then he says, you take what you did not deposit and you reap what you did not sow. Now, is he calling him a, a thief? Is he accusing him of stealing? No, he's a businessman. He's talking in a proverbial way, saying that, that you profit from other people's labor. You give other people opportunities and you expect them to engage in business and to do something with the things that you have given to them. What he has done, this third servant, has kept the mina in a handkerchief, in a napkin, to keep it safe. We might talk about it as keeping it under our mattress. But why? Why did, he, why did he keep it in this handkerchief in order to keep it safe? Well, he says that he was afraid. He wanted to keep it safe. He had just been given a, a large amount of money, a million dollars, we might even say. And he was afraid of the responsibility that that entailed. He was afraid of failure. He was afraid of losing it all. He was afraid of disappointing the master. But more than anything, he was a coward. He wasted the opportunity to use what he had been given for the master's purposes. I think his real mistake and what the nobleman is, is so upset about is not that there was no profit, but that the whole time that he was away, the directions that he had given to this servant hadn't affected him at all. While the other two were out being responsible and doing exactly what he, the master, had told them to do, the third was off doing whatever it is that he wanted to do. 
And so the nobleman responds. He responds to this third servant. He says, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. You know that I'm tough. You know that I expect people to do something with the things that I have given them. Well, you're right. And you didn't. So he says to some of the other people that are there, take the mina from it and give them to the one who has the 10 minus. Because everybody who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And that might be a confusing statement. And if we unpack it, what I think we land off, what we land on is the same is another parable that Jesus told. He says it, he says it this way. After he tells a parable with the same message about being faithful, he ends with this. He says, one who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. So if you're faithful with a little, you'll also be faithful with a lot. But if you're dishonest with even a little, you'll also be dishonest with much. So in this season of safer at home, where our movement is a bit limited and life looks different than it did a month ago, how are you to be faithful? What has, what has God called you to do? What does it mean for us to to love our neighbors in this season of social distancing? We have to ask some of these types of questions because otherwise we, we might just be carried along with the current floating down the lazy river, so to speak. We have to take seriously the words that, that Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5. And apply it to this situation where he says, pay careful attention then how you live. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Making the most of the time. Because the days are evil. Make the most of the time. You can sit and you can binge watch Netflix for eight hours a day. Or you can choose to make the most of the time. You can watch something on Right Now Media and spend time, spend time praying. I don't know how many people I've, I've talked to that uh, over the past six months that have expressed this frustration of, idea. I just don't have enough time. I, I'd read my Bible more if I had more time. I'd pray more. I'd engage in the spiritual disciplines if I had more time. Well, hey, guess what? You've got more time. Or maybe if you're on the other side of the spectrum and this has affected you very differently and you're working 80 hours this coming week, how do you make the most of this time? Having joy in your work, not grumbling or complaining, and making sure that you take time to pray, to be the hands and feet of Jesus as you go about your day and and be a person of stability in this time of so much instability. Whatever this season looks like for you, make the most of it. We have to ask some of these types of questions. And one exercise that might even be be beneficial is for you to take out a piece of paper, a notepad, and think about the priorities that you have for this season. So we know that this stay-at-home order is in effect until April 24th. That's about a month. Between now and then, when we might get some semblance of normalcy back, what, what do you have to do? What do you, what do you have to do? What are the obligations that you have? And then what would you like to do? What are the things that you would like to accomplish, that you would like to spend your time doing? This season that we are in right now, 
It is going to end. It is going to end eventually. What will you have done with it? I heard a quote from Andy Stanley this past week. He said, when the story of COVID-19 is just a story that we tell, let's make sure that our stories are stories worth telling. We will talk about this someday. This will be a story that we tell where we talk about what life was like during the global pandemic of coronavirus. What story are you writing? When you retell this story, is the story that you are writing one that you'll be proud of? And more importantly, is the story that you are writing one that God will look at and say, well done, good servant. You can't control the hand that you've been dealt. You can't control the season that we are in and the season that you are in as you're walking through this, whatever that looks like. But the call is to be faithful to be faithful to do what God has called us to do, to follow Jesus even in this, to make the most of the time that we have, to seize the season, to write a story worth telling. Hey, thank you for watching. We trust that you were blessed by what you saw and experienced with God's word today. If you have a concern, a prayer request, or if you would like to participate financially in the ministry of Community Church, you can find that information on the church website. God bless you, have a great week, and shalom.